one day you'll look up into the sky it'll be a lovely blue sky and you'll just make out the white print against the sky and it'll say Google. The world is changing, some might say, irreparably. Artificial intelligence is giving us something of a different view of life now. And in some ways that's good, but in other ways, is it so good? Where are we actually going with all these ideas on aping life, on trying to make it something that man wants to manipulate, shall we say. Mainstream informs us of the benefits of AI, helping people walk again, talk again. The new discovery can change our lives, bringing so many so-called revolutionary bits of progress. But has it happened before? time ago now, in fact quite a few years ago, we used to have ancestral sessions that were quite detailed and during those sessions we used to get into conversation with an ancestor about the shape of the world and on numerous occasions it was said that a lot of the mixed up uh, chaos that was happening today had in fact uh, happened before in another era um, and of course you could say oh well uh, this is something that perhaps a lot of uh, contacts from the other world might want to talk about because of the shape of the world and because they're trying to give some answers um, but to cut a long story short, during these uh, encounters that we had, it was said that there was some kind of uh, artificial intelligence that was produced that helped to shape the world in the way it is today. Now, this kind of relates to ideas about um, simulation. And if you've read anything about simulation, basically it, it, it tells of uh, our being controlled in the present from the future, in a sense. Um, the idea is that uh, it's almost like a computer program has been um, fashioned to incorporate what we're doing today and and the way we are today is kind of tweaked so that uh, we all think it's natural and normal and it isn't anyway if you look up simulation you'll find exactly uh, what it's all about and what you know what i'm getting at here it was said that the whole thing was controlled by people from other places places above i.e aliens and of course, this classic image isn't how they describe them. They weren't described as being, well, reptilian or anything like that. They were described as being more mysterious, more computerized, more like shapeshifters. Um, for quite a few conversations, we went into depth about the idea of uh, artificial intelligence coupling itself with ancient human beings so that the story ended up as 
ancient human beings and artificial beings being kind of woven together. Um, at the time, it made a little bit of sense, but it didn't really ring that true. And it's only since ideas in AI have been galloping forward at a tremendous pace that I've suddenly thought that, wait a minute, uh, some of our ancestors talked about this a long time ago and said it had happened millions of years ago. But they were concerned with a new wave of artificial intelligence coming along and the fact that this might uh, perhaps uh, start the story off all over again so that humans as they are now would be woven in with artificial forms of life so that even though it might have happened before and ancient people were woven into artificial uh, forms of life, doing it again means that it's kind of only making matters worse. So that's what they were concerned about. Now, some of you might think, oh, this is all a lot of rubbish. <laughs> you know, what's he talking about now? But I can't help but think that we had these conversations many, many years ago. And suddenly, with AI appearing, as it is, it's uh, ringing bells for me. It, it's starting to ring true that it's so easy if you've got the right technology to um, mix uh, artificial uh, forms of life with real forms of life. You could say that if this happened a long time ago, how did they have the technology? Well, that's something else we used to talk about as well, because it's a question we would ask. How is it someone has the technology to do this? And it's almost like, you know, the ancestors would laugh and say, you don't think it's just been invented, do you? You know, <laughs> this has been something that has been weaving in and out of life for eternity you discover technology it builds up uh, ruins the world and probably the world ends and then it all starts again that was the idea anyway um but the when you think of the 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 benefits it can give to human society it's you know it, it, it it's clear that it does help when people can help to be uh, walking and talking again but also we all know that there are disadvantages in the sense that uh, you know how much is artificial intelligence going to take over um, how dominant will it be and will we ever be able to be the same again if we're all subjected to uh, this kind of uh, thing uh, where I link it with aliens I don't often talk about aliens because you know it's a it's a strange old subject isn't it but where I link it with that is that it's a kind of it's kind of alien to life, if you like, to think about coupling artificial intelligence with normal intelligence, normal human intelligence. It's artificial, so it must be alien in many ways, uh, apart from which if we're talking about aliens in terms of people um, coming from other places in, in the universe, other galaxies, other solar systems, blah, 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 then it seems if we're told that the universe is this big, as big as they say it is, not that they can say how big it is because it's sort of infinite and that's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? It's a bit of an illusion, I think. But uh, how come we are the only life on Earth? 
how come that is uh, true, so they say. And we're, we're, we're looking for other forms of life. It, it wouldn't make sense. So something's going on here. There's something a bit fishy going on. And when you return to the idea of simulation, you think, actually, is this true? Is this true? Because, you know, this, this big, huge universe that's all around us, that we all accept, we all accept that it's there and it goes on ad infinitum with our end, with nothing else there but us in the middle, this little pinprick in the middle of it all. You know, something in me wants to say, get a life. <laughs> There's something, something going on that we can't see. Perhaps something going on that we're not meant to see. That's, that's the whole point. Something is sort of meddling with life, if you like. I think the only way we can look back and see that life was fairly normal was in the primitive age. And that's why I keep banging on about what it is to uh, think in a more primitive way and to look at our ancestors from prehistoric times. I think that's the only time it was fairly normal. And whether that's a small window in the whole of time, I don't know. I haven't got the answer to that. I don't think anyone has, really. Uh, time plays us a lot of tricks in many ways. But if there is something that we need to be understanding about the universe, it's, I suppose, opening our minds and trying to understand what is uh, possible, what, what sounds feasible to us. And to me, other life out in the universe sounds very feasible. It It's like if you live in a a small village and it's like saying well we're the only village you know on the earth there's no no one else <laughs> just because you haven't had contact with other villages just because you don't see anyone else it, it's um it's a mistake to think that you're alone and you're the only one i think um and this poor old planet poor old uh poof, poor old earth is suffering so much that if there were anything out there that could help us, then I'm sure we'd all be very grateful. But at the same time, you know, we seem to be uh, sort of turtling along with these ideas of, you know, the world's falling apart, but we've got artificial intelligence to help us. We've got people protesting about the world falling apart and they're doing their bit and we don't want the world to end. We want it to go on and on for the sake of our children and our grandchildren and all our descendants. Um, there are all these things that are going on. And it seems to me sometimes that we feel quite isolated or maybe we've been isolated. And that's something else the ancestors used to sort of hint quite broadly at. You know, if you're going to mess around and be dangerous to each other and be dangerous to everything else that's out in the rest of the universe, we're going to sort of uh, close the door on you and maybe lock it and throw away the key because we don't want that sort of interference coming out and leaking out into you know, whatever forms of life that are ticking along quite happily. I don't know, but this is all stuff that you, you can debate. And I think it's it's good to have these discussions, really, with each other, because, you know, the, it all needs looking at. We can't just assume that we're the only ones in the universe or, or we're the only ones who've got the answer to life. Um, many, many different ideas about the universe prevail, not just scientific not just ultra spiritual, you know, all these ideas prevail. But something that I started this video with when I uh, presented the idea of uh, uh, spirituality and artificial intelligence sort of joining forces and uh, priests and uh, deities 
um, being robotized and uh, teaching people. Um, when I presented that, I think, you know, this is this is a bit odd. This is a bit odd, really. Are we so deficient in providing wisdom for our people, people who follow us, people who believe in what we're teaching? Are we so deficient that we have to employ a robot to do it? You know, <laughs> where are we going? What's going on? I, I, I fail to see how it can help. I think it just ends up being a bit of a tourist attraction in many ways. Uh, I can't see it any other way. But AI and uh, people are going to come together. They're going to merge. And I think some of the younger generation will find this quite amusing. And they'll probably uh, want to join in with that because they won't, a lot of them anyway, won't see the problem, any of the problems with it. I feel that AI can be useful. I use it in my music. You know, I, I, I use AI quite a lot in my music because it, it, it helps when you're working on music the way I do. And I'm quite a a solo artist in many ways and it, and and I think there are some occasions where it is beneficial to us but there are others where it certainly isn't so I don't know where we're going with it but if we're looking at a primitive perspective then we might be saying let's hang on to our ancestral beliefs Let's hang on to the natural stuff that we have learned. Let's hang on to the natural world and the values, all the values that the natural world gives us with each season. That's what we need to hang on to and not assume that we can ro robotize uh, <laughs> everything. You know, how long before we have robot trees and robot clouds in the sky and robot this and robot that? And when we were talking to ancestors way back, I remember one of them saying, one day you'll look up into the sky. It'll be a lovely blue sky and you'll just make out the white print against the sky and it'll say Google. Ah, <laughs> that kind of chilled me, really, which could suggest that we are living in a computer program in many ways. Not that we haven't got the natural world, not that we haven't got our ancestors, but it's running alongside. Just like the ancestors said, it's the artificial stuff is running alongside the natural stuff. No wonder we're confused. I mean, I... I think it, it could have happened. There's no reason why you should assume that it, it wouldn't have happened, really, because how can we tell? But the fact that everybody uh, gets so muddled, the world is in chaos. People have a lot of mental health problems. They have a lot of emotional problems. It's a little like civilised life is running alongside those of us who are far more spiritual in our approach to life. We prefer to be with the natural life, with the ancient life, with the wild life. The life that used to be for all our ancestors. It leaves us feeling somehow alone, solitary, singular, so that we end up asking how is it we live alongside this mad, civilised society when we don't really feel we belong to it? In just the same way, we will be living alongside AI, feeling we also don't belong to it. So although it's terribly weird and confusing, we're here with it, and we have to get on in the best way that we can. So if we've got this idea that artificial intelligence is run, running alongside ordinary 
natural human beings and we consider that possibly it could have happened before um if we consider that then where does that leave us so we've got to cling on to the natural way of of living of thinking of behaving of being and more than that we've got to come together on it i mean let's have these conversations by all means let's ask questions you know we can't remain uh, with a closed mind we, we've got to ask these questions because ai is gathering pace and it's proving itself to be much more powerful much more dominant than we ever believed it could be and for that reason i believe that something like that could have happened before when it tries to control our ideas of spirituality in religions in spiritual thinking i think that's very sad it's a real shame that we feel that we can't uphold our own ideas in spirituality without having a robot talking about it for us that's very sad but it extends everywhere it extends to all fields of life and we are going to have to watch this happening those of us who are here now and those of us who are a lot younger than me will see it grow up into some great giant some great shadow and then before you know it everybody will be swallowed up by it and then we'll go into this new phase of artificialness and going further and further away from the ancient ways of thinking we used to have so it's almost like we're jumping each time artificial intelligence, if the ancestors are correct, each time artificial intelligence rises up and takes over, then we jump forward and we lose that wonderful part of ourselves all over again. And then how long before we can't uh, take hold of that anymore? We can't even imagine it anymore. That's going to come because that's where something, whether it's out there or whether it's in here, I don't know where it is, but something is trying to make that happen. I don't like it and I'm sure you don't either. But it is happening and we are living with it. So coming together and upholding those wonderful ancient values and beliefs that's what we need to be doing so that we make a stand against it so that we say well if it has been taken from us before if life has been changed for us before we are going to stand together and try to hang on to what we've got as much as we possibly can then that primitive side of ourselves will creep back in and help us to survive in a much more uh, normal, as normal as we can get it anyway, and natural, healthy way. This may have been confusing, this, what I've talked about, but I had to mention it because of the conversations we used to have years ago about artificial intelligence. And it wasn't really doing much at all back then. But we were sort of warned in a way that it's happened before and it could happen again. So I leave this idea with you. Make of it what you will.